Well, just like I thought they'd do, they pg 13 ified the opening of this movie. God damn it! Hey guys, welcome to To See or Not To See, and today we're going to be talking about Ghost in the Shell. Now, if you saw my review of the original Ghost in the Shell movie, you'll see that I really actually enjoyed that movie, even though I'm not a big anime fan, and I was really looking forward to this movie. To see my review of the original Ghost in the Shell movie, you can click the link in the description below. So with this movie coming out, I was excited, but I was also pretty worried too, because it looks like it wasn't going to do the source material justice. I think that anime to live action works about as well as, you know, video games to movies. It just, I don't think that they can be translated very well. And this is one of those cases. So in this movie, we have Scarlett Johansson as Morocco, or the Major. We have... F Pilo Pilo Ass... Back... As Bato. Huh. We also have Katashi Kitano as the Chief. And we have Michael Pitt as Hadley Cruz. I actually did not recognize this character. Apparently it's a character from the other Ghost in the Shell movies. He was not in the original movie. So let's go over the bad things in this movie. And we're going to start off with the biggest problem I had is that this movie tells, but it doesn't show. And what I mean by that is, with I don't want to spoil you know anything for you guys, but the original movie, they showed you a lot of things. They didn't tell you that this was going on. Like, you know, the you know, the line being blurred between humanity and, you know, machine. They didn't tell you that. They showed you that and you really got that feeling from the portrayal and the animation. They didn't tell you that this was happening. But in the movie, I don't know if they just think that we're stupid and that we wouldn't get that, but they straight up tell us in the opening credits that the line between man and machine is being continually blurred. And that's really when I knew that we were going to have a problem with this movie. Now let's move on to Scarlett Johansson as the Major. I, she just does not work in this movie. It almost, I'm going to address the elephant in the room. Yes, I do feel like this is whitewashing. There are so many like Asian actresses that they probably could have chosen for this part that would have been a hell of a lot better. And it's just, she just does not work as the Major because... The major in the anime, the original movie, that I felt she was more like a child and that she had like this innocent look upon the world where she wanted to learn, she wanted to get in touch with that human side, I just don't feel like Scarlett Johansson could, she played it, she played it almost like the Terminator, like just no emotion, no nothing, and I just couldn't get into her character, I just felt that she was just playing it flat, to be honest. Now let's get on to probably my biggest disappointment with the movie, and that is the villain. Again, he's played by Michael Pitt, and I know that he's portraying a character from some of the other anime movies. Like I said, I've only seen the, the first anime movie, so I don't know anything about this character. He's, the, he's a generic villain. The puppet master in the original movie was so interesting with the way that they portrayed him. This, this one just seems like a basic villain. Basically, he feels like a less cool version of the villain from the movie Skyfall. That's honestly what he feels like. And that leads us into the, one of the biggest problems I have with the movie, and that is added filler. And it feels like that the filler that they added in this movie, whether that they're pulling it from the original comics or you know, manga or whatever, if they're pulling it from the other source material, it doesn't work well. It just feels generic, honestly. Like, I could see a lot of this coming in this movie, and it almost feels like that the filler or the backstory that they added for... Motoko or you know the major whatever you want to call her feels like it was kind of a way to justify casting Scarlett Johansson in a role that should have been meant for an Asian actress. I wasn't expecting a shot for shot remake I was more expecting that just to be a remake where they expand upon them things that I thought maybe could have been expanded upon in the original movie but this isn't the case it's more of just like it almost feels like a, a regular American comic book adaption to where they just take you know borrow from multiple parts of this universe and then kind of throw it in, you know, a movie. It feels like a not very well put together comic book movie. Like Batman v Superman. What I did like about the movie though was Pilo Pilo Philo Ass Back. I'll get it right someday. Anyway, I loved him as Bato. I thought he was really great. You know, he really embodied I thought that character from the original anime. I really liked that. You know, I could feel with his acting, even though I did, couldn't really get into Scarlett Johansson, I could feel that 
him and the major, they had an actual friendship. It wasn't like a romantic thing. It was more of a a friendship. You felt a deep friendship between these two, that he legitimately cared about her. Takashi Katano as a chief of Section 9, I loved him. I thought he was great. His character just proves that you should never mess with old Asian guys. I mean, no good could ever come of that. And probably the thing that I love the most about this movie is that the movie looks beautiful. Like, honestly, like, I wouldn't be surprised if this gets nominated for an Academy Award. Like, it looks just amazing. It really does. I cannot stress that enough. Like, if you want to see the movie for any reason, go see it for the visuals. That's all I can say. Like, the story isn't very well done. It feels like it's really picked apart. But the... The, the movie just looks beautiful. I, I can't tell you that enough. Like, they really, I think, captured the look of the original anime very well in this movie. One more thing I'd like to mention, too, is that the music is pretty good in this movie. At times, it feels like just, like, a hand-me-down from Draft Punk when they did, like, the Tron Legacy movie. Other times, it sounds pretty good, and sometimes you can kind of hear the original theme appear and like that's one of the things that I really did love about the original anime is I thought the music was great and you do hear like little tidbits or whatever of the original theme but you don't hear it enough unfortunately though I just don't think this movie did the original anime justice and I'm gonna have to give it a not to see because it just doesn't do the source material justice Overall, guys, I feel the same way as I did about, you know, the Beauty and the Beast remake. It's like, why go see the remake when you could just go see the original, which is much better. I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm going to be reviewing all the Fast and Furious movies up until the release of Fate of the Furious. That's right. All of them. So that's it for me. As always, if you like what you see, go and hit subscribe. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description below. Also, be sure to check out my website. The link is also in the description below. And remember, I waste my money so you don't have to. Thanks for watching.